Hi everyone, my name is Dre and I am the host and founder of the Dragon Network. On today's video, I want to talk about the four different types of interoperability. Before I get started, I'd like to invite you to hit the subscribe button. If you like the types of videos that I've been posting, if you want to be notified of the next post, then make sure you turn on your notifications as well. Okay, let's jump in. So when we're looking at exchanging clinical data between systems, the term that's most frequently used in the healthcare industry is interoperability. The Cambridge Dictionary defines that as the degree to which two products, programs, etc., can be used together or the quality of being able to be used together. So with that definition in mind, we're going to take a look at the four different types of interoperability that actually factor in when we're talking about clinical data exchange. So first up, we're going to talk about foundational interoperability. Foundational interoperability is the most basic of the four types, and it actually is just the connection of system A to system B. So sending data from one place to the other. So an example of this would be a PDF document being sent from system A over to a data repository in system B. So the entire document is sent sort of en masse in whole and is just filed in a long list of documents based on the date it was sent. So an important thing to keep in mind about foundational interoperability is that the receiving system doesn't need the ability to interpret the data, it just needs to be able to receive it. So our second type is structural interoperability. So with structural interoperability, the data actually has discrete elements when it's sent from system A to system B, so that system B has the ability to file the data in targeted fields or in specific places. So this type of exchange actually preserves the purpose and the meaning of the data because you have some understanding about what the intent of the discrete fields is in order to understand how it's going to file in the receiving system. So an example of this type of clinical exchange would be a hospital-based EHR sending visit history information over to a patient portal. So the message structure is going to be defined in detail so that you can have the date of the visit as well as the location and perhaps the visit reason filed into discrete fields in that receiving system. So the third type of exchange interoperability that I'd like to talk about is semantic interoperability. And with this one, we're starting to get a little more purposeful with the data. So similar to structural, we do have discrete elements that are transitioning to the receiving system. However, with semantic, we have the ability to incorporate the discrete elements into the receiving system and utilize them in part of the functionality. So a great example of this would be outpatient lab data being sent to a primary care physician's office or to a hospital EHR, where the lab data can actually file discreetly by date, test type, and results. And those results can then actually be incorporated into other data within the system to trend the lab results over time. The receiving system might have the ability to trend data that has been entered directly from the hospital lab, as well as from outpatient labs, so you can track your blood glucose over a longer period of time with different sources. One of the other key things is that you can also look up the source of the data. Now, putting semantic interoperability in place takes a little bit more effort, as the clinical data that's being exchanged will need to be codified. So when we're looking at our lab data example, we would want to tag those labs with LOINC codes so that we understand exactly what test it is we're talking about so they can be trended appropriately in that receiving system. So we don't just want to go on the label alone and that's because between different systems, especially when there's different entities involved, they can have uh, completely different names or some can use acronyms, some can use long form. So you want to make sure that there's a discrete matching element and that's often a code. So within the healthcare industry, I would say by and far semantic interoperability is the most popular, but what we're actually working towards is the next layer of interoperability, and that's organizational interoperability. So when you look at organizational interoperability, you have clinical data that's being exchanged between two or more systems where the data, policies, and social meaning are actually maintained so that that interaction is seamless. So when we're looking for an example of organizational interoperability, I think one of the most common ones that everyone can sort of conceptualize is your health data within your iPhone. So if you have your iPhone connected to your physician's office or to the hospital that you visit, outpatient clinics and things like that, you can incorporate that data into the health app and you can also add data from other sources. 
So for example, it can track your heart rate from your Apple Watch. You can manually enter your blood glucose levels. You can track your weight in there. You can do all sorts of things and it will commingle and be put together in one cohesive set. So once you've got it all in there, you also have the ability to share that data with other people and you can control that sharing. So if you go to a new physician, for example, and they have the ability to ingest the data, you can send them components of the data, which may also include some of the data you've put there yourself. So it can include system data from your previous physician's office, as well as your glucose over time, your weight charts, things like that. So that's an example of organizational interoperability. And when we're working towards implementing APIs in healthcare and having it drive more towards consumer-based healthcare, this is actually what we're talking about, is the type of interoperability where data can sort of be ingested and be incorporated from various different places and can serve to enhance functionality in a number of different ways. So I hope it was helpful for me to go over the four different types of interoperability when we're talking about clinical data exchange, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.